Good day, fellow Jersey nerds, and welcome to episode 51 of the Jersey Nerds podcast, powered as always by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. I'm your host, Ryan, and you can catch me anytime on Twitter at HockeyJC, or you can email us here on the podcast at any time, podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Today on episode 51 of the Jersey Nerds podcast, we're going to be talking about social gatherings and what current NHL jersey would be appropriate to wear to some of these social gatherings. Uh, we're going to go to simple things and then just things where you know jersey is appropriate, but we have to come up with an answer. That's the whole point of this podcast. We're also going to be talking about the new CCM quick light collars that you're seeing around the AHL if you're a fan of the AHL or seen any photos or, or clips. We, we found that it's working for some teams and definitely not working for other teams. And, of course, we have Faker Authentic and Throwback Throwdown. And, of course, we have guests joining, as we always do. We have the current Thursday writer, Sean. What's going on, Sean? Uh, Not much. Enjoying a Canadian Thanksgiving in the great province of Prince Edward Island. I'm surprised you even found a connection to uh, get on this podcast. You know, you'd be surprised, but fun fact for those of you looking to travel to PEI, PEI does not have high-speed internet like the rest of Canada does, which if you know anything about Canadian internet, you'll know isn't exactly high-speed to begin with. Plus, plus Tonight's jersey, you can't see it because, again, no video feed. For, well, from unless, you pay, unless you pay the new price, the sixty nine ninety nine an episode for, for the video feed. The video nice. feed price has gone up because you guys aren't paying the thirty nine, <laughs> but the side to go with the jersey I don't think gets enough love. Uh, it's the it's a two thousand and ten eleven Minnesota Wild alternate. Uh, this is the famous um, this is a famous script uh, dark green alternate, but with the vector logo on the back, which was only seen for one season. I don't have a name on this, and I do have the wild 10th anniversary patch to go with it, but I'm thinking either Jared Spurgeon or uh, Josh Harding. Who'd they draft that year? 2010, 11? I just remember them revealing that logo at the draft, so that would kind of be uh, a cool tie-in. That tie was the 2010 there. NHL draft? Yeah, I'm sure someone's already looked it up who's listening to this podcast. I'm looking it up right now because I don't. <laughs> I legitimately don't. Oh, all right, well, Mikael Granlund. Granlund, okay. Oh, he's right. currently still with them. Yeah. All right, not too bad there. Not too bad. Also you know, on me. the podcast this week, former Thursday writer, friend of the show, Phil. What's going on? Phil wrote on Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesdays. First what do, of all, what do I know? I mean, it's not even my. I blog. mean, you're only in charge of the blog. <laughs> I had that whole thing planned out. It's like, oh, look at that. We got the new Thursday writer. We got the old Thursday writer. What do I know? Anyways, but it, that that part doesn't matter. Phil's on the blog uh, or on the podcast this week. Yes. <laughs> um, sporting my 1996-97 New York Islanders wave jersey. Not to be confused, of course, with the fisherman jersey. There we go. Um, what? What? <laughs> Hang on, boys. I'm going to go switch to the white version of that so Phil and I were in the home and away. Oh, oh yeah. Got oh, it. No, no. Stop. Dude, <laughs> your jersey's fine. Like, no, 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 no. This is the wave. This is the All Islanders Wave podcast officially now. Well, I don't have one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you should get one. <laughs> I, I'm holding out until I have a ridiculous amount of money just laying around, and then I'll get. A double XL fisherman jersey. That's the way that, it works. That's true. That's Anybody true. wants to the, the for, whole market, the whole market of like wave and fisherman jerseys has gone up significantly since I've gotten mine. So I may actually want to sell this. So I'm not gonna lie. There you right, go. So you guys, uh, you guys uh, send us questions in the mailbag. We also accept presents. So uh, feel free <laughs> to send your 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 gifts to uh, the HJC mailbag too. <laughs> They got double XL fishermen. They want to. They 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 just burning a hole in their closet. Please send it to Ryan and a turd burger while you're at it. Yeah. Send Ryan a double XL Ryan Miller turd burger. No, <laughs> I think he's good without that one. <laughs> I the turd burger is never going to be in my collection. Even if even if they put it on for like twelve dollars, like it's thirty two dollars on Fanatics right now. Still not, <laughs> still not low enough. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. All right. Well, we got the 
<laughs> got that out of our system and everyone's Check here coming. and ready. It looks like we're in, a, in the appropriate mood for our first topic. <laughs> Our first topic is social gatherings and what current NHL jersey would be appropriate to wear to these gatherings. Now, this idea came about because there's this, it might be other places too, but there's this thing in Toronto where if anything being done in the city is going to be on television, there's always at least half a dozen people in the crowd who feel that it's appropriate to wear their Maple Leafs jersey. Uh <laughs> Years ago, years ago, we had Conan O'Brien come to the city to tape like a week worth of shows or whatever. And every single episode, there would be guaranteed someone in the in the audience wearing a Leafs jersey because I guess that's what you wear to the taping of Conan O'Brien's show. Um, or like that one time when uh, they had some sort of wrestling event up there when uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson just absolutely slaughtered the Leafs in his. <laughs> Yes, like pre-match speech or whatever, yep. and there were someone wearing a Maple Leafs jersey in the crowd. It's guaranteed if there's an event in Toronto, it's going to be on TV. Someone finds it appropriate to wear a Leafs jersey, so that's where this idea comes from. And I, I want to start with a, a really simple idea here. If you have a party with your friends that you're going to, and what what current? This is the key thing here. Current NHL jersey would you throw on your back to go to a party with friends, Sean? Well, fundamentally, I am the jersey guy. So let's make it clear, I am expected to wear a jersey. But if I'm going to a party, I need to wear something that's eye-catching enough that people look, a little obscure enough that they're willing to ask, but not something where they go, what the hell is he wearing? So for this party... I'm scared. (laughs) I'm going to wear the New Islanders alternate. Oh. With... Robin Lehner on the back. <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad choice, though. Uh, that That's decent. That's decent. Do you want to, like, explain it? Why? Sure. Yeah, wh- what's that going to do for you at this party? Well, it's uh, business in the front, party in the back. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't think it's party anymore, honestly, after the uh, article he wrote for The Athletic. Or whatever. That's true. And, or Players Tribune or whatever you wrote it for, yeah. And, and fundamentally, um, you know, goalie jerseys always beg the questions. And I think, you know, realistically, uh, they, they, you know, people ask, oh, I didn't know he was on the Islanders. And I'll go, yep. And they'll, and they'll go, I remember he was in Ottawa. And I go, yep, remember Mike Brodeur? And they'll go, nope. And then we'll go, okay. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's your conversation starter? It's your icebreaker sometimes? Facebreaker sometimes says, hey, remember Mike Brodeur, the Ottawa Senators uh, future uh, Hall of Famer right there? And they say no. I go, "Uh, okay, see ya. (laughs) That sounds like that's going to work wonders for you. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go to Phil. Phil, what jersey are you wearing to a party with friends? A party with friends? Well, um... The one jersey you you should not wear just for just to be clear for legal reasons um, is a a Chicago Blackhawks Patrick Kane jersey because <laughs> otherwise people are going to assume that you're either going to fight a cab driver or, or get in get in trouble with a girl. I was going to um, say you better be the DD or else no one's picking you up after that party. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, like, personally, like, I wear Islander jerseys to certain parties anyway, so, like, I've got an Islander road jersey, so, but at the same time, you don't necessarily want to get, use a road jersey, because it's all white, and yeah. you, you're you're going to get, like, beer stains somewhere, let's yep. be honest, some, some klutz is going to spill their drink everywhere, and it's going to splash, or if you're playing beer pong, like, the ball's going to splash in there and get and get a little bit on the jersey, you don't want that. You want it to be on a darker colored jersey, so I'm gonna say you're gonna want it with on a uh, Buffalo Sabres jersey. Interesting, very interesting. That'll yeah, that'll hide a few stains. Got a little bit of color and character there, a little bit. So yeah. not too or, bad of a better, choice. Better idea. Better. I've got two better ones for you: the uh-huh. Golden Golden Knights gray jersey, uh-huh. or the new San or the new San Jose alternate. Yeah, I was I was on yeah. the same wavelength there with the the Vegas one. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah, I was. I'll settle on San Jose's uh, new alternate. With uh, 
Who knows? Maybe that kind of uh, circuit board pattern would be slightly reflective for any oh, yeah. for any sort of lighting effects. I know for all the parties I go to oh, with sure. all my friends, there's always <laughs> lighting going on. I would have to choose a Flyers orange jersey, double zero gritty on the back, and that's yes. just because it's currently topical. And I usually, I mean, t- currently my beard's a little short, but I usually have a big bushy beard. And I'm a bigger guy walking around with a flo- uh, orange Flyers jersey with gritty on the back. I think that could googly spark a few. Oh, oh, I'd love some googly eyes. Hell, I'd just love but to show have, up in the costume. They have like those glasses, like w- that you have to eye things that, like, <laughs> with the springs or whatever. Like, bring one of those too, eh? We are coming up to Halloween, so this sounds like it's turning into a costume party. <laughs> but black, uh, black. Oh, ho, helmet, and you're all set. There we go. Nice. Now we're talking. All right. Let's move on to a, li- a little bit of a trickier situation here. We're moving on to a job interview. Now, you have to wear a current NHL jersey to a job interview. The uh, The business does not know you're showing up in a jersey. So you're, you're still trying to impress. Sean, what jersey do you go to a job interview in? Well, fundamentally, you want to go out and get this bread. So you need to find the jersey of an absolute workhorse, which is why I'm selecting an Andrew Cogliano <laughs> Anaheim Ducks jersey. Because despite the fact that his streak got snapped on contentious sir, No, sorry, I'm going to change. Well, no, I can't. I just remember Matt Stajan's not in the NHL anymore, and now I'm sad. <laughs> so, well, Andrew Cogliano Ducks jersey. But just know that if we were allowed to pick outside of it, it would be a Matt Stajan Flames alternate. There you but go. But understand... And you, you know what you could do, Sean, is you could tie in, like, obviously the uh, interviewer is going to ask, why are you wearing a hockey jersey? And then you could tie in, well, just like the fellow who's on my back, I'm also a hard worker. Well, exactly. You know, <laughs> and you could pick any number of hard workers in the NHL. But let's pick the guy with the Iron Man streak that unfortunately got snapped because of a crappy suspension that he didn't deserve. Andrew Cogliano. Well, let's do the Ducks alternate. Because why not? Because why not? Because it proves that you're willing to take risks (laughs) and do what's best for the company. Now, here's here's a question. Do you tuck the jersey? It's a job interview. Uh, do, Do you tuck it... Like how Gretzky tucked it? If, I don't know if that would work. That would look a little sloppy. I'm thinking more you're yeah, trying to... Full tuck. Full, full tuck, tuck. All the way around. Full tuck. No. Well, I mean, I mean, granted, full tuck works if you brought something that didn't have a hem. I guess so. That's, that's like not if you too rocked many. A, well, then, Florida, if you rocked a Florida or an Ottawa or a... Anaheim home tenant. jersey. Anaheim home jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then you got orange shooting up your sides and he looks at you and he goes, oh... <laughs> I see someone thinks you're working for Home Depot. And, you know, if you're applying to work at, like, Rona or Lowe's, forget about it. (laughs) You don't go to the Rona interview or the Lowe's interview. I guess Lowe's is more recognizable. Wearing orange. Yeah. Uh, So many people are listening to this right now going, what the fuck is Rona? Who the hell? What's a Rona? What do you you hosers call friggin' Lowe's up there? And it's like, Like, I've heard heard of Rona, but I never actually knew what it was. So thank you, guys. (laughs) There you go. It's a mediocre hardware store where no one's around to help you, and uh, you trip on empty paint cans. (laughs) So like like Ace Hardware. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a little bit like Ace Hardware, but uh, like a little bit less finished on the inside. Kind of like, uh, kind of like the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> All right, Phil, you got to wear a jersey to a job interview. Which one are you going with? You have to go with an original six jersey, for sure. Okay, and you're going to want a jersey that has, well, first of all, that's that's both classic and yet outstanding. Because in a job interview, you want to make sure that the guy who's interviewing you knows who you are in a good way, okay? Wearing a hockey jersey may not necessarily do that, but, like, if you're, if, like, other people are wearing jerseys to the said interview, like, you want one that stands out, but yet is classy. So, just because of the fact that I gener- generally wear, like, a black uh, kind of th- theme whenever I'm doing an interview, like, especially if it's, 
like really classy and I want to wear a suit jacket. Um, I'm going to say the Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins. Good choice. I was, I'm thinking something similar. Like, uh, you want to go, I want to go original six here and I want to show that I mean business for this job interview for this business job interview. And yes, who used to be no very business, uh, not so much anymore, but very much business all the time. The Detroit Red mm-hmm. Wings. So I think I'm uh, along similar lines there as you. Yeah, feel, but... but that's but that's also like obnoxious red. <laughs> so what? Classy white. I'm, I mean, yeah, but there's still a lot of obnoxious amounts of red on that there's, jersey. There's a good portion of red there, where especially around the neck. Boston kind of has. A classy black tie affair look to it that could exactly. be pulled off in an interview scenario. You just hope that the guy interviewing you isn't like a Habs fan or something. Well, if I'm not interviewing in Montreal, I'm good. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm down in the States. I'm fine. Not too bad there. Um, okay, here here comes one of the tricky ones. Uh, if these weren't tricky enough already. You got to wear a current NHL jersey to a funeral. I knew this was coming. <laughs> You're the guy. I selected a jersey because I knew this was coming. <laughs> You're the guy. You put on the dress shirt, the nice pants, and then you're going to throw your funeral jersey over top of that. Sean, who do you have? Well, fundamentally, a little levity is uh, a little helpful in these situations. So why not wear something that says, well, he's dead, so he doesn't have to watch blank. And I think what's better than watching the travesty of hockey that is the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> <laughs> They'll throw on a Senators jersey at the next funeral you have to go to, and they go, ah, oh, Chuck lived a good life, but at least he doesn't have to see the Senators. We get 42 <laughs> points this year. <laughs> oh, he kind of lucked out in that regard. Or my other pick would be a Vegas jersey. Vegas again. Vegas okay, again. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're <laughs> picking like one of the flashiest jerseys in the NHL to go to a funeral in. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but you see, again, you know. Like, Sean rolls up to the funeral in an Escalade, keeps his sunglasses <laughs> on in a Vegas jersey trimmed with gold. Yeah, and then <laughs> when the casket goes in to be burned, you can put the Vegas jersey on there where it belongs. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Take a shot at Vegas on the way out. No, that, you know what? the fact that you're completely wrong about that, but okay. <laughs> well, what am I wrong about? The fact that, it be- that the uh, Knights jersey belongs in a furnace. It does belong in a furnace, as does Vegas's, uh, you know, mob of douchey fanboys oh my god <laughs> and just a little bit of resentment there just going back to uh, the the whole cremation thing there i i have a funny story completely oh. off the topic okay. of hockey here. <laughs> Hold on. i i gotta tell this story it is a funny story what did somebody put their pet in the oven or something no okay oh so god. so Jesus, my... took a dark turn. <laughs> yeah where are you going john your time in pei yeah. has made you made you sick man but you never heard the pet the like people who thought they could cremate their their pets in the uh in a household oven story no no i I i'm sure that's why they have to put the side that's why they have to put on the side of the of the green bins in the toronto area don't put your dead pets in that's true that's true that is there (laughs) anyway the fact that a sign is needed for that is kind of sad first of all yeah no kidding um, so anyway, my funeral story. So uh, un- uh, this is like we're talking 10 years ago now. It doesn't matter. Uh, my wife's uncle passes away and everyone in the family. Uh, and I'd only met this guy maybe half dozen times. Uh, everyone in the family was a pretty much a fragile woman who was not able to lift the casket. So because I was one of, you know, a dozen dudes there. And of those dudes, I was able to actually hold the casket. I ended up being a pallbearer at this funeral, carrying this casket oh, around oh. everywhere we went, including, including into the, I believe it's called a crematorium, crematorium, yeah, whatever. Crematorium. Yeah. And I was one of the people who rolled the casket into the oven. I'm not lying. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
some guy you met once. No, uh, uh, maybe half dozen times. But yes, okay. I walked into this room, and, and uh, for whatever reason, they wanted it to be part of the ceremony. But just in the positioning, I was at the end of the casket, six guys carrying it. And so, you know, the front row peels away, the second row peels away. And then here's me and my father-in-law at the end of the casket, rolling it along this like conveyor belt, like it's the beer store or something. But <laughs> I'm not joking. That's what I thought. Shout out That's to how it's done, in though. Ontario who nobody's talking about. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, go to a beer store in the Toronto area and you'll see exactly what he means. Literally, like it's a conveyor belt of wheels, essentially. It's not like a, a, a rubber band or anything. It's a, what? yeah. It's a... So that's my, that's my funeral story. My but God. I wasn't wearing a hockey jersey to that funeral. <laughs> I could have, though. I definitely could have. Thank uh, God you didn't. <laughs> My advice is to, uh, Damn it, if you're got... going to throw your least favorite hockey team's jersey on someone's casket, check with them before they die to make sure it's okay with them. Dude, I know you're on your way out, so I just want to make sure it's cool that try... I throw a Sens jersey on your casket. Try, 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 to, try to get it in writing, <laughs> so when you do it, you can you can show the family and they go, oh, okay, it's, a, it's, what, it's what Gus would have wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's what Gus would have wanted. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Phil... To our imaginary funeral here, what jersey are you wearing? Probably, well, it's got to be black, first of all. Agreed. Okay, because obviously the somber uh, attitude of, about it. Um, I want to try and avoid red because red's the color of blood. <laughs> but- um, so, so I guess the best option for you is a Los Angeles Kings home jersey. Yeah. I was going to say because, the same thing. Yeah, because that's probably the most somber-looking jersey of them all, honestly. <laughs> More somber than a Sens jersey? Well, no, the Sens jersey is just miserable. It's not somber. It's miserable. <laughs> it's miserable. <laughs> okay? And, like, plus with all the... First of all, I, I just mentioned the whole thing about red being the color uh, of blood. Dion Phaneuf Sens jersey just sent the... <laughs> Look at him. He's in mourning, and you're there in your Dion Phaneuf jersey. Just, that's just flat-out disrespectful. <laughs> you can at least pick it. That's where Phil draws the line. It's okay to throw yeah. your Kings jersey on, but a Phaneuf jersey, that's just gutless. It's, that's it's gutless. Respectful. Respect the dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. So, yeah, go ahead, LA, Phil. LA Kings. Yeah. Black jersey. Okay, that, that was going to be my choice. So now I'm scrambling for a second choice here, but that's okay. So I'm, I'm agreeing with you on a black jersey. So I'm, I'm looking at maybe, the... Cr- maybe, maybe the Flyers uh, Stadium Series that's jersey. What I, that's what I'm looking at because that's that contains a lot of black. But with Especially the fly- with the numbers. That's true. With the Flyers' reputation, though, like if this guy... Uh, if we're thinking that... What if this guy died by nefarious means and you show up in a Flyers jersey? With the Flyers' reputation, you know, mm-hmm. you n- might not be considered entirely friendly there. Moving All of on. a sudden, Gritty's implicated in things. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking mascot showed up to the funeral. Get him! Yeah. <laughs> you turn the funeral into a, I mean, a beating, which comes later in this segment. But <laughs> anyways. Yeah. I, I mean, there's two areas of that city that you don't want anything to do with when it comes to like funeral stuff and that's north of philly and south philly there you go there's a heads up stay away from all of philly i live there (laughs) trust me (laughs) um so you know moving to the next team in pennsylvania the penguins now you're wearing but that's there's a lot of yellow on that penguins home jersey and if you throw crosby then you just look like a dick you weren't really thinking about it you just threw on your favorite jersey to head to this funeral so I'm going I'm to go with one that Phil chose for another segment. I'm going to choose the new Sharks alternate jersey. That's got a lot of black on it. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe that circuit board pattern would come off as a little, you know, sleek. Like, oh, he's trying to look good. Like someone who's got a nice, cool pattern in their dark and, suit. And not only that, but like with the lighting of a funeral home, like it's not flashy. It's not going to reflect as much as it would say in a party. <laughs> <laughs> right there we go that it's a valid point it is an extremely valid point I, I mean going through these scenarios I, I half of me wants to like 
do these as a social experiment just to see <laughs> what would happen. Like, you know, show up to someone's funeral and just I'd be like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Bring the jersey, throw it on. Oh <laughs> I would never do that. Oh, no, please don't. All right. Here we are. Uh, now, for this next one, you have to assume you're in a gang and you've pissed off a rival gang. And now you're headed to a gang fight. What jersey are you putting on, Sean? Well, fundamentally, you want your jersey to offer some form of protection. After all, you do have a big crest on the front of your jersey. So something big and round or something that protects the heart area. Okay, all right. And Because just in case somebody gets their switchblade out, you want to be the one to avoid that. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck like a motherfucker. Go on. So analyzing (laughs) this... Analyzing every jersey in the NHL, you're going to want to avoid the Rangers, first of all, because that offers no protection. That's right. No, you're fine. Neither do the Capitals, <laughs> and neither really do teams like the Lightning or the Canucks or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, the, Cal- the Carolina Hurricanes alternate, the stick crosses over at just the right point to offer some key protection, but nowhere else. So my vote in this case, I'm going to go with a... Um, a Buffalo Sabres jersey. Really? Big, round crest. Offers lots of protection. You could go with an Edmonton Oilers jersey as well. Yep. Something something to get that crest protection going. And frankly, something you don't mind if a big stab wound <laughs> comes into the logo. I'm so, so glad you said that because I was going to suggest the Islanders. <laughs> and, and who... And who And who else would you get on the back of it? You want two numbers on the back, first of all. What? Just in case an attack from the back's coming. John Scott Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, now, of course, I'm always against Jersey Fall, so I'm not just going to get Wayne Gretzky. And fundamentally, you can find more numbers that offer protection. How are the numbers going to protect you from the back? In case somebody stabs you from the back. Wouldn't you want to get, um, who's the mascot? Sabretooth. Yeah, Ooh, nah, <laughs> Justin Bailey. Well, what does no, Bailey wear? You get, the, you get the paw print right there. Yeah, the paw print. That's going to protect print. you from the back. No, that's just the that's just the target. <laughs> uh, that's point. target. Raspus Ristolainen is a good name to get on your uh, Sabers protective oh, jersey. Oh, you're, you're thinking of pretty, I love More coverage the better, right? Yeah, I love how you're wearing a Sabers jersey, jersey as body armor. Uh, Nathan uh, <laughs> Bullio. <laughs> and plus, it's it's and plus, you know, it's a very unsuspecting jersey. So if you wanted to slip something up your sleeve to, you know, hide up in there, you know, it doesn't really, uh, it won't really show through. Plus, people m- may not take you seriously in the gang fight. They may be looking at you like, "Who's the dipshit who showed up in a Sabres jersey?" <laughs> who showed up in a fucking Sabres jersey? <laughs> like, wow, like fuck, guys, don't even bother with him. He'll probably <laughs> knock himself out later. That guy just looks like a pedestrian who wandered into the middle of this thing. <laughs> Phil, wh- what are you wearing to your gang fight? See, there's a couple of cir- too many. There's too many circumstances surrounding this. Like, I want something that like represents my gang. If I'm, if it's going to be a, like a well-known fight, like <laughs> in terms of colors, like is your is the gang color red, blue, or white? Um, plus, not only that, that, but like you want to have a jersey that has street cred, so. I'll, I'll pick one for each side, okay? One for red, one for blue, because <laughs> that's generally how it goes nowadays in terms of like gangs, okay? One of the the big, the probably the biggest jersey that has street cred that's red is the Chicago Blackhawks jersey, home jersey. Yeah. So you want that? You're you're just letting them know, hey, look at this. I'm I hate you guys because you see the colors and you know what I've got a lot of cred here so don't fuck with me. <laughs> Watch out for the red. I'm clearly labeled here. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. I don't think there's really a blue jersey in the NHL that has street cred. Like maybe maybe the Rangers, but I'd never wear that. <laughs> um. I guess the Colorado Avalanche alternate jerseys. Good choice, but I mean the, those white shoulders—they're gonna get—they're gonna get bloodied pretty quickly there. You don't care if you get blood on that jersey, though. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Why would you care? Like the only—the only thing about blood on your jersey you should worry about is like what blood you're dishing out 
from other people on the jersey. Splatter. You got to be worried at splatter. Oh, stop it. You, you can easily wash it out. <laughs> Especially if you get like a Fanatics jersey. Oh, well, that offers no protection as far as the crest goes. <laughs> well, who cares about protection then? You protect yourself with your fists. <laughs> and I didn't describe any weapons. I mean, you could bring like a table, a table leg with a knob at the end. <laughs> Or or do what happened uh, ahead of a Red Bull New York City game and just use like one of those sandwich board signs as a weapon. <laughs> I'm totally or do what I Mike Miller does that. and just use your own shoe. Yeah, use exactly. Your shoe. Or what Ron Artest does and hit the guy who was next to the guy who threw the pop on you. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, seriously, look it up after the podcast. <laughs> NYCFC Red Bulls sandwich board. That's all you need to look up. Oh, uh, I hope that's on YouTube and not just a news story. I think it is. I'm, oh, not, I'm not sure, though. Goodness. I know there's a news story out there. Oh, that would be so good. i got to see someone get hit by a sandwich board. All right, as far as, as far as gang fight here, I'm going to take a little bit of Sean's advice, and I'm going to take a little bit of Deadpool's advice. So I'm yeah. going to, for Sean, I, I like the whole idea of a crest, possibly adding that layer of protection for any uh, heart strike that someone may go for. And then as far as Deadpool goes, he had to learn the hard way that uh, you want to wear red because you don't want to be doing laundry all the time. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to the Red Wings here, and I'm going to choose their just their... Don't, just don't just don't wear Hershey Bears pants. <laughs> 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 the Hershey Bears and their brown pants. <laughs> I'm going to choose the Red Wings. Hopefully, the the tip of the wing there is going to provide uh, maybe some slight extra protection for any sort of stabbing that may occur. And if there is a stabbing. Uh, I may not have to wash the jersey because, uh, you know, red jersey, red blood, everything should be fine. And I may be ready to go in case there's an instant rematch, which can uh, which can happen there. So I guess I'd take the Red Wings. Maybe the Devils, too, because they got that little, you know, devil horn coming up from the J in their logo. That may provide a there's little a, extra. Little, the little snout extra of the stuff. Coyotes. <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh, I should have gone with the Coyotes. That's a good one, Phil. That's an excellent one there. So lots of options. I mean, if you're ever concerned about what you should wear to your gang fight, lots of options if you're looking at the NHL roster. Uh, Here we go. Here's our last one. This is a very important one. What current NHL jersey would you wear on a first date? Sean. Well, fundamentally, you want to wear a hockey jersey on your first date because you you want to get that out of the way up front that <laughs> you feel like a hockey jersey is everyday attire. Listen, this is going to be... You don't want that to be a surprise later down the <laughs> yeah. road. You want this up front. If she can't accept you for your love of jerseys, uh, she doesn't deserve you. You just want to show up and be like, listen, this is going to be a thing. So our... and if here's any, your chance. If anybody you remembers, uh, Jeremy Roenick was incredibly romantic. When he went on off the record and started singing about how he will be your hero, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and what team was Jeremy Roenick playing for at that time? That was the Flyers, was it? He would have been with the Flyers or the Kings, but Jeremy Roenick is most famous, perhaps, for wearing the Kachina jersey. Yeah. So my advice is, do the Kachina jersey, or if that's not really your thing, Go with something smooth, sleek, lightweight, something you don't mind throwing off later that night because there really isn't much to get wrinkled on it. So you go with San Jose Sharks home jersey. Interesting choice. Not bad. Um, is that really going to impress the ladies? Ladies love teal. <laughs> Fact. Ladies love their teal. What can you say? What, can, what, what, what lady doesn't look at a shark jersey and she's going to be like, Ooh, he cares about the lightweight adaptiveness that the San Jose Sharks. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to say, ooh, he's a fish fan. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another option is if you're a patch man and you want to show off all your patches, get a Florida Panthers jersey. You know, she'll look at you and she'll go, whoa, he has two sets of shoulder patches on that jersey. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, Sean, and, it's all, and, it's all, and it's all military inspired and I love my country <laughs> so I like this or maybe she's one of those avant-garde artist chicks with the straight cut bangs who watches skins and uh, tells you to choke her so why don't you go with the uh, Carolina Hurricanes alternate too <laughs> Sean uh, I hope one day you find this lady who has, <laughs> who has an appreciation of NHL jersey patches just like you do I really hope you do. Hey, get, it, 
you really want to impress a lady, get in Jersey with an anniversary patch on it or something. Like, he cares about those sort of things. Look at him. He remembers dates. This guy is a keeper. This guy's a keeper. <laughs> is that a new Jersey Devils 35th anniversary patch? You might remember our sixth month. Oh, my God. He remembered. <laughs> remember <laughs> Keith Kincaid. I remember him. Oh he remembers God. the small things. Oh, Sean. I, I, you will find someone one day. There, <laughs> there's someone waiting for you out there. Uh, oh. <laughs> Phil, in the circles you hang out in, I'm sure an Islanders, <laughs> I'm sure an Islanders jersey would be completely appropriate for a first date. But see, the thing is, so like, it's either completely appropriate or a complete turn off. Because you have to remember, like, Long Islanders still have Ranger fans. True enough. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, there's a there's a so you know what? I'm gonna go outside the NHL here, okay? Because there's one team in this area that unites us all that no one really cares too much about, but it's obscure. But it shows that you respect women, and that's the Metropolitan Riveters. <laughs> Phil's going out. Phil's going against the rules because that's how he gets the job done. Exactly. <laughs> well, if we could go outside the rules here. I was gonna. I was. I was, I was gonna go in uh, rocking the uh, Connecticut Whale jersey. <laughs> Why? The weight. And, oh, oh, the NWO. Bitches the NW, love hockey. Oh, oh uh, I thought you were gonna say the NWHL, the NWHL one, or the AHL. Oh, the AHL one, because Wade oh. Redden played for them. And... Oh, well, actually, you know what? I can go to follow the rules here. Well, no, because Pucky's not on that. Never mind. I was All about right. to say, just find something with Pucky on it. <laughs> All right, I'm removing the rules for this for the first date. You can The okay. closet is open yeah. for any hockey jersey. All right, whatever jersey I want to wear. Yeah. All right, then I'm wearing, then I am probably going to wear my Jonas Hoagland jersey. Oh, my God. <laughs> my Jonas Hoagland Leafs jersey. You know Drink. what? <laughs> Why? Why would you wear that? I wouldn't even wear that to a party with friends, which was the first thing we talked about. I wear that jersey at least once a week. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Sorry. You know what? No, I'm going beyond this. I want her to know the real me. Nick Antropov, Winnipeg Jets home jersey. My <laughs> classic jersey. The jersey I'm most well known for. Oh, my God. Oh. The jersey that if I asked someone to draw a stereotypical depiction of me, it would be that Nick Antropov Jets jersey. <laughs> Sean, I hope one day – I'm just picturing this in my mind, that you get set up oh. on, a, on a blind date and y you just are chatting all night about Nick Antropov and the meaning of your jersey and how it's from the inaugural year and why do you have that? Well, let me explain to you why I have that. And then she goes back after the date is done and just goes – Oh my God! He was talking about the stupid fucking jersey he was wearing, and he kept going on about this one guy I don't have a clue about. What was his Nick Antropov? Antropuvo? Like <laughs> Nick, whatever the know. hell it was. So like Kazakhstan or something? Like him, <laughs> gross. Oh, Apparently that's... he was on some team called the Trashers. Like Trashers. who even cares for a team called the? I saw his license plate cover, and it had this bird on it, and it was in a shield, and I was like, oh my God, I can't really deal with that right now. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, one day, Sean. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> Phil, are are you changing? You are you changing? Or are you no? You've gone with the Riveters. I, I said the Riveters. Well, the other thing is like their logo is not just any woman, but Rosie the Riveter. The inspiration, by the way, for women all the way since World War II to today. Okay, there you and go. if there's nothing on there that shows that you want a strong woman and that you support strong women okay it's that jersey there you go nice choice Wait, do we there. know if pucky's a chick no pucky we had him on we interviewed him last month pucky's yeah, not a chick pucky's not a chick i mean i met him outside red bull arena he <laughs> emphasis emphasis on him <laughs> all right just he's a he sure, if pucky were a woman that'd be one hell strong of a woman <laughs> Well, I don't think a woman would appreciate being called a whale. So let's put it. Is the Connecticut is the Connecticut whale of the end of the uh, NWHL pucky a different pucky? I don't think there is pucky. It, it's just like a whale. I don't think it actually has a name. They probably couldn't afford pucky. Pucket. <laughs> Pucket. That's awful. That's just that's Pucket. terrible. Pucket. Anyway, you're not anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to choose, I'm going to, because I've eliminated the rules for this question. I'm going to choose. The Kale Telquist Leafs jersey. No, not, <laughs> not for a first date, Shut Sean. Up. 
<laughs> second date material. I granted, I do own one of those, but that is yeah, that's second date material. That's not first date material. I'm thinking that an appropriate jersey for first date would be a Boston Bruins Pooh Bear jersey because oh. it's got that innocent looking bear on the front. You might get some uh, some contact there, like she might need to reach out and touch the sad looking bear. And then checks. <laughs> and who's going on the back of that? Byron Defoe, Anson Carter. Good question, Sean. I wasn't prepared for that. Felix Jason Nelson. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, who would I? I don't even know who I'd put on the back of that. T.J. Axelson. Maybe just Pooh. P O O H. Yeah. With whatever number Winnie the Pooh, the stories of Winnie the Pooh were invented. Hundred. You just need number one hundred for the hundred acre wood. Done. Oh, that's awesome, Phil. Oh, man. Uh Uh, Phil has just added a jersey to my want list. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) This is just, this shit just got real. Oh, my God. All you need is nameplate, acre, wood. Oh, my goodness. Phil, you've just opened up my eyes. That's awesome. I prefer my Nick Antropov strategy. (laughs) Ah, (laughs) fuck you, Sean. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, you know, that's why we're Jersey nerds. That's why this is the Jersey Nerds podcast, and that's we why the worst Jersey fouls ever, and they sound amazing. <laughs> it's because everything listed here is hypothetical. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking about that funeral thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get on to our, our next segment here, and that is the uh, new sweaters, the Quick Light by CM CCM. Uh, They're just being used exclusively in the AHL this year. And we're going to specifically focus on the collars because the collars are probably one of the biggest changes uh, of the jerseys. They're they're big, kind of thicker collars. We've we've seen that uh, pattern, I forget what we were calling it, uh, carbon fiber kind of pattern uh, on almost all of the collars. And some of the collars... uh, the laces, we don't have any dangling laces. I mean, I think I saw the Wolf Pack would still use dangling laces. But most teams just have two laces crossed in an X. And these are kind of big collars. Uh, let's look at some of the teams that they that the, the, this new style collar currently works for. And I, I did see one uh, going through a few photos. And that's the Providence Bruins. And specifically on their black jersey where it's just black and gold. It's a big gold collar, and it still works, still keeps that jersey together. Doesn't look silly or out of place. Uh, Phil, I know you follow the AHL at least a little bit. Uh, Maybe a team that you have noticed is really using this collar well. Yeah. Well, just to clarify, the the, uh, Wolfpack don't have the dangling collars. They have the two... Oh, do they? ...pieces that are... Yeah, they do. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. So perfect. uh, From one of their wins. I don't care who it was against honestly <laughs> um but yeah the one thing that i've seen or one team that i've seen where it works perfectly is the bridgeport sound tigers like obviously i'm biased like i i follow the sound tigers because they're the islanders minor league team so i get more information from them um and their main jerseys they're islander copies for obvious reasons and the only jersey we've seen in action so far is their blue jersey, which they wear on the road for the first half of the season. And the collars are solid orange, even on the inset as well. And it has, I believe, a cross uh, pattern on the laces where it forms an X. And I got to tell you, it looks amazing. Yeah, I saw it and you saw yeah. the picture that you, you shared in the writer's chat. And it suits mm-hmm. it suits the jersey. It doesn't look... Right, big, big and blotchy and, and kind of like it doesn't overtake the jersey. It just works with everything that they're doing. Right. And like other jerseys, like it doesn't have to be a solid color jersey like we've seen on certain ones, like the color, like the Colorado Eagles, who look absolutely terrible. I mean, granted, the jerseys themselves are bad in, yeah, anyway. That, that was a um, really But like the Hartford Wolf Pack, down. like their jersey set, which is based on the Rangers Stadium Series jersey from, what is it, almost five years ago now. Yep. Um, like the jerseys themselves are terrible, but like the collar is actually really good because you see three co- you see three colors. You see blue on the inside, white in the middle, and red on the outside, and yeah. a white inset. 
Like it actually looks good. It works. So it, it's like a pieced yeah, together it, collar. It still it still kind of has a bit of a a new look, and it has all. I think it has all the points and angles that CCM is going for. Like that one's put yeah. together well. Yep, yeah. it's put together well, and it has also like those little bump thingies that are going all the way around it. I don't know what the hell those things are, but because yeah. I haven't seen them in person, but it looks like it looks like like you know when you get those like credit card offers and they have like a piece of card stock or whatever that's designed to look like a credit card you take that <laughs> yeah. off and you have like the stickies right there yeah. it looks exactly like those <laughs> but like but other than that like, like it looks great so i think ccm has done a great job with, with most of them can't say all of them like yeah obviously colorado and uh ontario rain but they did a good job for decent amount of them sean have you, have you noticed any ahl jerseys uh that are using this new ccm collar well so one team that i think who's using this really well is actually a team where their total identity kind of sucked until it updated a little bit and that's the bakersfield condors and how are they how are they using the collar because i haven't seen anything from them I'm looking at a photo right now of it and fundamentally where i think that the collar gains a lot of strength here is that a it differentiates themselves a little bit from the Oilers because the collar does look substantially different from the Oilers' um, collar that they currently use on their away jersey. And their logo contains a lot of uh, accent colors, particularly silver and the white. And when I look at this, I just see it more as a continuation of that. It's some accent colors, you know. Obviously, the jerseys are still templated Oilers. Mm-hmm. And, but but it, it works with the logo. Like it, it just seems to fit with what they're going for in the primary, and I think that that's what we like to see from teams. Uh, and another team that I think really looks well, and frankly, it just seems like ever since they rebranded everything they touched turns to gold, is the Texas Stars. That collar also looks good, again, for the same reason. When you have accent colors in your logo, this collar really shines through. One team, and this is just because it's the team closest to me, uh, is the Marlies, and they, for me, this collar becomes big and bulky and gets in the way of the jersey. So on the blue jersey, the Marley, Marlies are wearing this big white collar with a white insert and white laces, and it just looks like a ridiculous-looking bib. On the, uh, on the white jersey, they're using a blue collar with a white insert and, again, the cross laces that we've been talking about. But, again, the collar just looks big and in the way. And um, it's just, it's it's so funny how it's pretty much the same collar. Like you look at a team like San Jose where they have a solid color collar with laces and it seems to work for them. But the same setup just in different colors doesn't work for the Marlies. And I don't know if you guys have noticed any teams where it doesn't work for, but uh, I noticed that the Marlies are one of them. Charlotte Checkers. Charlotte Checkers. There you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, the whole uniform is terrible in general, but like it's big, bulky, and solid black from on the collar. So yeah. it's not working at all. Sean, have you noticed any team that really the collar isn't working for them? The Grand Rapids Griffins. Really? It distracts from the what is otherwise, I think, a pretty solid jersey set. Is that reflective material just doesn't work with this look, I think. Like, I think that the, 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 the solid black collar that they had last year worked perfectly. Mm-hmm. I've actually really warmed up to this identity for the Griffins. And this reflective collar does nothing for me. It's just a distraction. Because it's the same color as the jersey. But because it's that, the reflective material is very distracting. And it takes away from that subtleness of, we're just going to focus on the yoke stripe here rather than having a colored collar. It's like, no, well, the colored collar is still there, and it's all just kind of garish. And I also will say that I completely agree with Ryan about the Marlies. It's... And <laughs> I'll throw the Laval Rocket in there because they're the Laval Good Rocket, tall. and Good I tall. don't necessarily hate their jerseys. Just hate the team. I just feel like they, the one thing that they didn't need for a very unique identity is to add a reflective collar to it yeah the 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 texture is cool like i i think it would have worked for some teams like it would have been great if it was given as an option here's something you can do yeah 
And so you could have teams that are looking for a more classic look, like let's say the Marlies, um, who could have gone without it. It, I mean, even that material doesn't affect their jersey. It's the size of the collar that affects their jersey. But uh, we saw it. One of the first examples we saw of this collar was um, San Jose, the Barracuda. And it works Mm -hmm. extremely well for them, I think. But uh, just another thing I've noticed with these new style collars is we have not seen any replicas on sale yet. And I don't know if that just is because CCM wants to go through the old stock, the edge first, before they come out with these. Or if we're going to see them maybe later in the year. I don't know. But I have not seen any replicas using the new style the new style collar yet. And then again, it also is the AHL. It's not the easiest yeah, thing to, exactly. get, to get merchandise. Well, let's make it very clear here. Um, you can still get uh, new stock Iowa chops gear. And, would, <laughs> and, and first, and, 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 you know, first of all, I love the Iowa chops, bring them back uh, as soon as possible. Like forget the Iowa wild, the chops are sorry. It was technically an initialism. So it's like C dot H dot O dot P dot S. Whatever. Oh, my point is, is Iowa Wild sucks as an identity. The Iowa Chops must return. We want chops. We, we want, want chops. chops. There we go. If you're a, an HJC listener out in Iowa. <laughs> Write your local team and get the chops back on the ice. And we will uh, we will laugh about it because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, just looking at the callers that we have seen. And let's look at this overall. All the AHL teams included here are all the callers that you've seen. And you have to choose whether or not overall the callers are working or not working. Which side of that argument do you land on, Phil? I'm going to say, like, overall, like, for a majority of the teams, they work. So I'm going to say it's working. Sean? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with working, too. There's enough teams that have that accent silver in their color scheme that regardless of what you think of carbon fiber style uh, uh, collars in the first place, they at least provide something to the jerseys. Like there's very few teams that you just look at and you go, oh, you know, it would never work. And the teams that it does not work for, uh, it's usually because the collar is the same color as the jersey. Yeah, I'm also I'm going to have to agree with you guys. I think overall they're working uh, as long as they keep innovating and kind of within the style that they have coming up with new ways to use the collar. For teams to always improve their look, I think that would be uh, that would be uh, pretty cool. So yeah, overall they're working. So it'll be interesting to see what we get from uh, the CCM Quick Light jerseys going forward. Now, can we also destroy the Syracuse Crunch jerseys just in general while we're at it? There's a few. Yeah, there's a few jerseys in the AHL that they just teams hang on to, and it's like that's got to go. Like. Yeah, why uh, isn't anybody using the slug template in the AHL? Oh god! <laughs> oh no, just kidding. San San Antonio does, and they look yeah. great. <laughs> They've owned it, though. I I mean, they yeah. have owned it. It looks better on them than any other team that wore it. In fact, we should really be calling it the Rampage template. True. At this point, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, but uh, Stockton, like, I forgot they existed. <laughs> it's such a boring identity. Oh my gosh, like. And and the ECHL team wears those too as well, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, no, they wear something slightly different. And then, in fact, something that you think is probably better, like that they have that uh, pattern as well, but it's like a normal hem stripe instead of something down the sides. Like uh, Oh, there you go. Oh, the the Adirondack Thunder? Yeah, the Adirondack Thunder. Yeah, they wear all But then again, they also have the Phantom There's... Yoke, so. Oh, right. They do too, don't they? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Calgary, just get your ducks in a row and get your shit in line. Put that... the team back in Abbotsford. <laughs> Everything no. there sucks. No, hockey doesn't work there. <laughs> Maybe the Canucks. Maybe the Abbotsford Heatbacker. Ryan, you're the one who made that Abbotsford Canucks comments years ago, Utica right? Comets. Yeah. Move, move the Comets. Well, they're big in Utica from what I Yeah, hear. they're huge. That's Well, then put another team in Utica and just have them not affiliated with the Canucks. Yeah, name them the Steam Hams. All right. Well, let's move on to... Uh, at this point, God let's move it. on <laughs> to Throwback Throwdown. This edition of the Throwback Throwdown is a classic rivalry, but it's the 1999 version of this classic rivalry, and we're looking at the Washington Capitals 1999 blue and copper road jersey 
going up against the Pittsburgh Penguins Robo Pen with the Gradient Chest Stripe Road Jersey. Uh, so let's take a look quickly at Washington's jersey to begin with. This is the copper blue jersey with a black angled stripe on the hem that says Capitals on it, outlined in copper and white. Uh, that stripe repeats on the arms. Kind of a very unique font here. I uh, haven't seen something similar to it since. And then we had the eagle logo, the kind of screaming eagle logo on the front and the Capitol building shoulder patch going on. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, this is the black jersey uh, introduced in the mid-90s as part of the first third jersey program. We got the RoboPen. Uh, we got the lines from the RoboPen's wing kind of running through the center stripe, which is a gradient that goes from silver to gold. That doesn't make any sense, but there it is right in front of me. It's happening. Uh, we have triangle gray or silver shoulder yokes with faint gold thin stripes in it and then uh, we also have a silver sleeve on one side that's angled with a white and gold stripe and on the other side we have a traditional silver sleeve or cuff with some thin stripes in that so that is just a crazy jersey now that i've had to sit here and you're gonna have to have it take a drink of water after describing that yeah no jesus christ no kidding there is so much going on there (laughs) Let's start with Washington, though. And, Sean, you can uh, start us off with your review. I, I'm pretty sure you're a fan of this thing. It's, like, one of my favorite jerseys in NHL history. Oh, God. Of Just course it is. I love this jersey. I love every minute of it. I never saw it as a kid, and I didn't really know it existed for a while because I grew up in an age where the cap said, no, nah, screw it, we'll get rid of our best uniform and take the one part of our black alternate that people really liked and – uh you know, we'll just use that for a bit, and but yeah, this is these these are really I love the I love the colors used here, particularly that really awesome shade of blue here. I really like that. I like the color balancing done here. I really like that check mark uh, stripe. I actually kind of prefer them. Uh... Oh no, wait, never mind. No, that was <laughs> that was only the white jersey they took the capital script out of. So yeah, I love the script in the hem. And overall, I just think that they're highly underrated jerseys where the team did moderately well in. And I think that they're uh, they're relatively rare these days because people like me went and bought them up. <laughs> Phil, wh- what are your thoughts on this? I, I like this jersey. This is the jer- one of the two jerseys I grew up with. I grew up more with the black jersey that was part of this set, which had that awesome like half arch nameplate. Yeah, that's mm. what I was meant about. The thing that I liked about them was the, the way that that... Uh, it, it arches out, but the letters get bigger and smaller and then bigger again. What's that? Yeah. What's that style called on Photoshop? I think it's called bridge or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be something like that. Flat, so anyway. on, flat on top, arches up in the middle from the bottom. Yep. Um, but with this jersey, um, I have a copy of like some sort of NHL Kids magazine where this was considered a brand new jersey, alongside, of course, the Fisherman and the. Uh, Bruins jersey with the uh, yellow half sleeves. So this is my childhood <laughs> right here, <laughs> essentially. Um, and not for nothing, but it was a good jersey. I, the logo is fantastic. Uh, it flies well, for lack no pun intended there, with the striping. And, of course, you have the uh, Capitol Building logo on the shoulders. I paired it with the black equipment and helmet like it's not ideal but like it kind of works in like the weirdest way possible excuse me yeah i i mean i agree with you i like the the primary logo here i do like the color blue the The word mark can go the word mark can go go, and i think it did go eventually but uh Uh, yes yeah at some point i think it went away but that was no it was no, it didn't go away, uh, but uh, until the jersey itself went away in two thousand. Okay, all right. So I was wrong there. That's that's fine. Um, just what Sean calls the check mark hem striping. That I I think that's terrible. I, I just, it's just goofy. <laughs> like it, I don't. It's not the leaf striping, so <laughs> I like it very so. much. It's it should look nice. like the sixty-seven leaves all the time. Straighten out those hem stripes, son. <laughs> Um, but uh, I even found the number font a little 
difficult to read. Now, now it I really am sounding old. To read. Yeah, I mean, there could have been a better choice there. And I just always preferred and thought of the Capitals in blue and red. So when they went away from the red here, it was a little disappointing. But let's move on to Pittsburgh's RoboPen with the gradient chest stripe and all the other features that I described. Uh, Sean, what do you think about this thing? This is another jersey that growing up I just missed out on really remembering because by the time I started following hockey, I started really following hockey the year that these were eliminated. So 0203. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, looking at the rosters here, we're talking about like the end of an era for the Penguins. You know, this is this is the time where Yager was on his way out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the goaltending was Regget, Barrasso, and Scudra. Don't forget you know, about Ron Tugnut. Ron yeah. Tugnut was there for a little bit, but those were the three main guys. So yes, he yeah, had like four Barrasso. relatively successful goaltenders, but. The Pens teams were good but not great in this era, and frankly, that's how I feel about these jerseys. They're very much so classic. I love, I love how they look in old photos, but reasonably speaking, they're just not a jersey I've had a lot of contact with. They're not a jersey I see very often. These are kind of rare jerseys, and it's just I lack that exposure to them to really have strong feelings about them other than, yes, they existed, and there's really a lot to like about these, and I think that they're criminally underrated and granted i'm like the biggest fan of the robopan ever <laughs> but i just i just doesn't have that connection that the uh, the caps jersey has or something like the the other robopan jersey has to me phil the problem with this jersey is that the gradient while i appreciate the fact that they tried the gradient makes no sense whatsoever <laughs> you have Solid gold with thin white pinstripes bordering it that somehow meshes into gray with two more pinstripes in it. And then you have a shoulder that makes no sense because you have uh, the gray there as well, but with gold pinstripes this time. And then you've got one sleeve matching one half of the chest stripe and the other sleeve not matching anything about the jersey. (laughs) <laughs> and then not only that, but they had the classic socks from the from the beginning of the Lemieux era jersey, where it was solid black with the with uh, three separated stripes of gold, white, and gold. <laughs> like those didn't make any sense either. So like this jersey was all over the place. How true! And like that that's what makes it so great about being the in the nineties. Like there was so much going on here, and they tried so many different things, but all at the same time. So everything's a little like complicated and like mashed together yeah i didn't realize how bad this jersey was until i just started describing it a few minutes ago and I'm, <laughs> usually uh, like hockey jerseys have have a rhythm or some sort of symmetry yeah, but to look them. At it. just look at it on ice it looks pretty good <laughs> it does you don't notice these things i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing like i think I, it's a good thing i think that basically what they said was they are extrapolating the details they were trying to make a jersey that looked like the Robo Pen logo itself, right? So the, so the arm that faces the penguin, uh, the penguin's chest is going to look. Don't like have that. the chest stripe go all the way around. Yeah. Have it that's on the just, that's, the that's just ahead of its time, frankly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, well, it's ahead of its time in that they were probably the only team in the NHL at the time that wasn't Montreal who had a chest stripe. Um, Fair enough. I think, and they so, were probably yeah. the only team to attempt it until Detroit threw back. That's fair. Like a decade yeah. later. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. I mean, I do respect this jersey just because it's Mario I mean, Lemieux wore it. Yeah, it, and that helped it. Like it's it it's a ridiculous and jersey, surprise. but you had Lemieux and Yager wearing it, and they held on to it for it. who? Ron Francis. Ron Francis. Sorry, yeah. Yes. Alexei Kovalev wore it. I mean, Tom Brasso is a Hall and, of Famer. And, and, and then you lose all respect for it when you realize Darius Kasparaitis wore it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Darius Kasparaitis. I, okay, you know what, though? I love Darius Kasparaitis. He was, he's a classic, like, rough and ready Islander kind of guy. Do you know who wore it best of all? J.S. O'Ban. Oh, God. Somebody that <laughs> Ryan not... and I look at and go, ew, and, you know, if B. Poe and Steve were on the podcast, they'd be like, oh, God bless him. He was such a good backup in Pittsburgh. Never <laughs> quite good enough to be a starter, but... Oh, he was always there when we needed him. And we and someone Tony who I say, sitting who there the going, oh, that? God, 20 games of hell. All right, we're not going down the J.S. O'Ban road. 
I love how that's a road. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but it, it is. In his hometown, he's a hero. It's J.S. Obey Avenue. No, that's not true at all. Anyways, this jersey is just a mishmash. I, I respect it for how long it's stuck around. And just, I guess it's like if you say something long enough, people start believing it. But they just kept this jersey around long enough that for some reason I remember accepting this as, okay, that's a that's a hockey jersey. But now I'm looking at it and, no, that's not a hockey jersey. That looks like my son assembled a bunch of things and, put it on a jersey template and he's six years old so that's how that goes all right let's choose our winners here and uh i have a feeling i may know how this will go but sean who do you got here washington or pittsburgh oh washington by far and it's not that pittsburgh didn't put up a good effort it's just you're literally talking about one of my favorite jerseys in nhl history here all right phil i'm gonna go with with washington also by far but not for the same exact reasons that uh, Sean just mentioned, but rather for the reasons that I mentioned saying that Pittsburgh was all over the damn place with this one and that Washington had something that was like 90. It was fully 90s, but like it was a clean 90s look. I couldn't agree with Phil Moore. Uh, I'm not uh, necessarily a fan of that Washington, Washington jersey, but uh, yeah, it's it's just better than this Pittsburgh jersey and all of a sudden, doing this segment, I realized how bad this thing is. So, take, <laughs> <laughs> taking the clean sweep, three to nothing, is the Washington Capitals uh, Capital Blue 1999 jersey. And now we are going to get to fake or authentic. Fake or authentic. Fake or authentic? I've come up with three statements that I believe to be authentic, and it's up to Phil and Sean to determine whether or not these statements are fake or authentic, just like the jerseys you see around NHL arenas. Here we go. Statement number one. Fake or authentic? The all-star patch looks pretty bad on the Sharks jersey this year, Sean. Well, first of all, I'd have to see it. Well, then... (laughs) You, you are literally sitting in front of a computer with access to everything in the world. No, no. He's no. in PI. It doesn't, no, that no, doesn't help. Understand. <laughs> That's the rating of it. I'd have to see it. It blends into the jersey so much. Really? You think so? I can't see it, really. It just looks like a bunch of lines. No, this looks terrible. It's a terrible logo. It's... It's meant for people who think Vegas is a decent hockey franchise and oh, wow. <laughs> that adulting is a word and, you know, they're all on my lawn, off the lawn, <laughs> clean your room, off the lawn, and make better All-Star Game logos. <laughs> Phil. I'm seeing pictures of it from their game against L.A. where they wore it on the white jerseys and, like, yeah, it kind of does fade into the background a little bit, but it's a white logo. Mm-hmm. For the most part, with a little bit of with a decent chunk actually of black on the bottom. I actually like how it looks better, where it doesn't say Honda on it, but rather it says San Jose in the bottom. So, uh, let me see if I can find a picture of the teal jerseys with it. But I think I saw one recently, and it looks pretty good. So, um, I'd what was the what was the full question? It looks, <laughs> sounds like you're going to be well, fake, but the All Star patch looks pretty bad. On the Sharks jerseys this year. Yeah, yeah, that's fake. <laughs> and I went authentic, and uh, it might look better on the white jersey, but it's it's the shape of the logo. And I get why it is. We've discussed this already. But just the shape of the logo, because it, it it's very square, it kind of looks like a temporary patch or something that, that wasn't cut, you know, didn't take the time to cut it nicely. But... That's just what the logo is, but I still don't think oh, it looks... Oh, I, I, just, I just found a picture of it on the teal. It looks gorgeous, okay? It's 100% <laughs> fake, and you're all wrong. <laughs> there we go. Terrible. Phil Phil laying down the law, bringing down the hammer. All right, fake or authentic, number two. Not including outdoor games and the All-Star Weekend jerseys. We have not seen all of the alternate jerseys for this season. Fake or authentic, Sean? I'm going to say authentic. We probably haven't. Some team's going to squeak one out, you know, <laughs> after a little bit. Um, you know, I feel like and it's going to be like uh, Dallas, maybe. Dallas might be like, oh, yeah, right, these. Here you go. 
I would think Pitt, I, I, Pittsburgh plus we haven't, might have we haven't seen the St. Patrick's jersey. Yeah, but from yeah, but my understanding I, is it's the same thing again, but whatever. Uh, that's that's the theme of the year. The same thing again. Plus, where's Vancouver's alternate this year? Like, I thought we were getting one from the Canucks. Well, I, I thought they weren't going with an alternate this year because they're doing the throwback next year. Oh, right. That's stupid. We want the same thing we got <laughs> a few years ago thing. And we see how well that's working this year for the whole league. Well, if you would stop picking on Winnipeg and Carolina for doing something new, maybe teams wouldn't feel the need to do this. I like what Winnipeg did. I like. I don't like what Carolina did, but... I, I like what Carolina just, did because it's new. Oh, you're crazy. It's new. <laughs> it's something new. Just it sucks. It sucks. It's new. It sucks. It's not, the, it's not the Flames red jersey again. <laughs> but you can do new without being... Garbage. All Flames That's red true. jerseys, no new alternates, makes Sean a dull boy. <laughs> Just going on the uh, Hurricanes jerseys, I saw a tweet this past week where I guess it was someone who was on the design team, and they tweeted out, we worked for close to two years on this jersey. It's fun to finally see it on the ice. And I just saw that tweet, and I was like, really? This thing took two years to put together? <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I believe it took two years because they probably had a really good alternate about a year ago and they scrapped it. No, it's probably like a year and a half of focus groups and it's like, oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. All right, Phil, you fake or authentic? We have not seen all of the alternate jerseys for this season. Not including like Winter Classic or uh, Stadium Series or All-Star Game jerseys. That's great. I'm, look- I'm looking at that thing that was leaked on Reddit where you have all the uh, – teams that are going to have their jerseys and just going through it all like let's see columbus has put one out yeah. st louis put one out the canucks have not yet done so um so we're still waiting on potentially something there i'm excited for that uh let's see we got the capitals avalanche coyotes devils ducks uh flames flyers hurricanes islanders just released theirs and it's gorgeous don't <laughs> i'll fight you on that uh, the other Two interesting ones are the LA Kings and the Tampa Bay Lightning that are still due to unveil something. Very interesting. Uh, the Leafs, we, we all say it's going to be the St. Pat's jersey, so I wouldn't be surprised about that. The Penguins are listed on that, but I think that's also for the Stadium Series jersey. That's uh, what I game think. Game against Philadelphia. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, Sharks uh, came out with theirs, Jets, Oilers. So, yeah, we still have three teams, or four teams technically, if you include the Penguins, that haven't released anything according to this uh, chart. And Carolina, by the way, producing two jerseys. <laughs> um, and they're – are they even listed on here? Yeah, they are. Um, so we're still waiting on Vancouver, L.A., and Tampa Bay to possibly do something. So I'm excited for that. So you're landing on authentic on that on this one. Yeah. Right? Yes, I am. Especially LA. All right. Yeah, I mean, I forgot about those, and I forgot about that chart. So that, that that's exciting to to have something to look forward to, like uh, LA and Tampa Bay alternates. So that's good. Fake. I'm not looking forward to Tampa Bay actually uh, it, because it it's going to be black and it's going to be boring because <laughs> Tampa Bay. And Sean is now drooling. He can't wait for it. Oh <laughs> no! I want the return of the original Bolts jersey. Oh, oh no! No more no. returns of anything for now. All right, Faker Authentic number three. At some point, I will own a Fanatics jersey. Sean, Faker Authentic. It's probably going to be authentic. I'll <laughs> find one for like 30 bucks on clearance, and it'll be like, here, have this regular old Habs home jersey Ugh. for 30 bucks. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Phil? I'll wear it for like street hockey or something. There you go. Or I'll for... lend it like a... It'll be the street hockey jersey I lend out. <laughs> That's good. According to the promo photos, you can fall asleep and let babies sleep on top. It's true. I can, yeah, right? Yeah. It's true. I can let my, let my dog fall asleep with my logo. Or, you know. <laughs> it's perfect for the promo photos with the Islanders as well. Uh, I, don't, I, can, I can, you know, when you, when you have... Fall, uh, fall asleep uh, watching uh, Islander games. Asleep. And you're that... having company over, and she's like, I'm cold. And you're like, here, wear this. Here. Oh, you're laying over in your jerseys? Yeah, that one really means a lot to me. You should be really <laughs> careful with it. Phil, that would be an awesome promo photo. 
If the so guy's just sleeping wearing an Islander jersey right. watching a game, watching <laughs> a game, and he passes it up, intercepted at the midway point, and here come the Hurricanes, <laughs> eight to one Canes, and the guy's just passed out. Actually, uh, the, the, passed the, out the funny, that, the funny part about you mentioning that is, like, on the date of us recording this podcast, the Hurricanes did drop an eight spot on a New York team that ha- doesn't happen to be the Islanders, unfortunately. There you go. I picture like that part. Or fortunately, too. I should say. <laughs> and like, the, like those... just, just Photoshop uh, Al from Toy Story 2 in an Islanders jersey when he's asleep <laughs> and the Cheetos are spilled all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm picturing, actually. That's good. That's going on the HCC Twitter. Get ready for that. Oh, yeah. God. We'll get Beepo on that. Um, okay, Phil, <laughs> fake or authentic at some point. I will own a Fanatics jersey, referring to yourself. Um, I have to say I will own one, so authentic. And only because, like, I'm broke as fuck right now. Like, I'm not, it's it's not going to be an Islander jersey, though. So, like, the Islanders, I want to go full on Adidas. Because, yeah. like, I've seen the, uh, I've seen pictures of the Coyotes Kachina uh, Fanatics replicas. And those are awful. So... I'd have to say, like, probably some sort of other collectible jersey, like the Ducks third jersey that just came out. I have a Fanatics jersey. I have a Fanatics jersey. I feel like Is it I'm... Leafs? It, it's Leafs? Yeah, it's the Arena's jersey. I feel like oh. I'm confessing something now. But I have a Fanatics jersey. But I feel like getting... Like, I, I need the Leafs white road jersey. But if I were to get the Fanatics version of it, I feel like it would be doing, like some sort of disservice to my beloved Leafs or like, oh, that's not the way to treat the Leafs. You go out and you get an Adidas jersey. That's not oh, that's stop. not proper. The, 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 okay, the Leafs can survive with you buying a Fanatics jersey. They need the money, Phil. They need oh, yeah. the money. They need the money to pay Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner next year and <laughs> William Nylander right now. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little tough. Yeah, the Islanders should offer Sheet Matthews next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that's that's possible it's scary but <laughs> it's scary but then you look at uh, the game this past week they had against chicago two goals for matthews hat trick for taveras seven oh. to six <laughs> Ooh, phil's moved on already <laughs> all right I didn't, uh, know, I didn't know snakes were allowed to play hockey there you go i knew it was going to come out at some point <laughs> Uh, that's what we have for you this week. Don't forget on our blog, HockeyJerseyConcepts.com, you can pick up uh, shirts and stickers from our Jersey Casual line. Uh, we also have the Buffalo Sabres redesign just for fun competition going on. And if you're listening to the podcast the week that it comes out, that competition ends this Friday at noon. As far as votes on the blog, we have the monthly vote for September up, the Concept of the Week September vote going on. And, of course, every week we have the Concept of the Week vote going on. So those are on the blog right now, HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. October 12th. Get it done. There you go. That's for the uh, the Buffalo Sabres competition. That's for when all I, of it. Yeah, that's when everything, everything ends. Meant. Be ready. October 12th is the day when it goes everything down. Everything ends. <laughs> Uh, as always, we want to get uh, we want to hear what you guys think about what we've been talking about. So, if you want to get involved in any of our conversations about social social situations on when to wear a hockey jersey, when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate, we'd love to hear your stories too. If you got a story about showing up to a job interview or a funeral in a hockey jersey, love to hear it. Love to hear it. You can get us on Twitter at hockeyjc or email us podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Sean, uh, thanks for getting an internet connection and joining us. That must have been, <laughs> that no, must have you been difficult. You are most welcome. I'm just in the middle of making that photo of Alf and Toy Story in the Islanders jersey, so stay <laughs> oh tuned. Did you, oh, my God. Did you have to find the only Starbucks on the island so you get an internet connection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole island of PEI has, has Wi-Fi, and everyone has to share it, right? Half a Starbucks. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for making the effort to uh, to to be on the podcast all the way from East Coast Canada out there and amongst the Dodgers. potatoes. Yes. Yes. Enjoy. 
Enjoy your Canadian Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, we hope you're stuffed with turkey by this point. We hope, I hope that you have, everyone who's listening, who's Canadian, had just the best Thanksgiving Day nap. There's nothing better than that Thanksgiving, oh, yeah. than a Thanksgiving nap. That's, that's just one of the You best. Americans went to like your local furniture stores for your Columbus Day sales. <laughs> that's a huge <laughs> thing, huge thing in the U.S., uh, Phil, thanks for joining us this week and, and listening to our Canadian Thanksgiving ramblings. My pleasure. I'll enjoy the turkey on uh, November 22nd. Yeah, whatever you guys do on that day for yeah. whatever. <laughs> but otherwise, t- otherwise today was a pleasant Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well put, well put. That is what we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next week.